Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the most amazing filters that I've seen in Photoshop Express 2022. This is a filter that uses artificial intelligence to create dynamic 3D effects from photos, from one still photo using artificial intelligence. Guys, this filter is amazing in terms of what it can do. There are times when it works really well, there are times when it maybe it needs a little bit of help and what I want to do is to go through some of the factors that influence the performance of the filter. Now when the filter works really well the results are amazing. Let's take a look at one image here. I'm actually going to be looking at several examples just to allow you to see what we can do and maybe also how to tackle some of the problems you might encounter. So it's going to be a slightly longer tutorial than usual. We're going to go through the uh, workflow, we're going to go through what adjustments you can make, when to use the 3D uh, workspace, when to use the 2D workspace. Let's get going. We're going to start off with this image here. This is an image from Adobe Stock. It's a guy, I have no idea whether he's, uh, he's happy or sad. I, I can't tell from the look on his face. He's, he could be, <laughs> he could be ecstatic or he could be uh, he could be uh, in some trouble. What we're going to do is to reduce the size of the image. I'm going to view the image at 100%. It's quite a large image and you can tell from the details inside the image. Well, I can tell certainly looking at it that this was probably photographed in the street where this guy is standing and not a composite. We're going to take a look at how to reduce the size of the image. Let's go to image, resize, image size, and we're going to go down to probably about 1200. So that's a width of 1200, height of uh, 930. I'll try to keep it not much larger than this because the filter actually uses a fairly small image to process. Uh, it, it comes out as, as a small sort of 10 megabyte uh, mp4 file so there's no point in having a really large image now i'm working inside of the expert um, uh, tab you could work inside the quick tab but um, working inside of the expert tab and it's going to be very similar the, the workflow we'll click on this icon to zoom and one to one this is what it looks like now that i have reduced the image size uh, to 1200 across I'm on a 1080 screen, just about fills the screen and it's a lot smaller than the original so that we're going to have a, sh a much shorter processing time. Let's go ahead and choose enhance and right down here, moving photos, look at the way that the, everything on the screen is going to change. All the stuff at the sides is going to change the stuff at the bottom, the stuff at the, uh, at the right. There we are. So it's changed quite a lot and we're going to start looking at what this filter can do. Over on the right hand side, there are a number of options. And if we try to play this button down here, it gives us a little signal telling us you got to double click on one of the options. So we're going to hit OK. And I also want you to notice down here, there is an export and a cancel button. So those are pretty self-explanatory, right? We'll go over here and I'm going to choose one which is called in and out and this should give us a pretty decent idea of how this thing works. We'll double click and you get this icon here, this little box telling us what's happening. And when you see the little whirly, it may be different on your operating system, but when I see those little dots, those whirly dots, that tells me that it's processing in the background doesn't take too long and you can see what it looks like. It plays once, just once and to play again. And in fact, to play on repeat, we go down, click on the button and let's take a look at that. Now I want you to, I want you to think about the image you're looking at and tell me, is the guy happy or is the guy sad? Is the guy ecstatic or is he terrified? Down here, we've got a button saying 3D. If we click on that, once it turns to t 2D. And I'm going to show you when you want to do that a bit later on. Let's go ahead and stop this. I think that looks good. In Photoshop Elements 2022, 
we can get this with just a click of a button. I think it's amazing. I think it's really, really amazing. Let's go ahead and stop this and take a look at what it looks like with some of the other, with some of the other options. So you can get a short preview of what the options look like and what they do. These ones are interesting. Okay. So this is tilt down and tilt up. I'm going to click on these two. I want you to try and predict whether the guy is going to look happy or terrified, depending on which of the two I click. We're going to start with tilt down. Does, do you think the guy is going to, the expression on his face is going to change? And if so, how? Is he going to look happy, neutral or terrified? We'll, we'll double click on tilt down. We'll play the animation again. Now to me, it, it, he looks happy. He looks euphoric. <laughs> it looks like he's jumping up in the air. And I really like this effect here. Now with a tilt up, he's going to look terrified. I think he's going to look terrified. It does not change the expression on his face. It's just the animation that seems to change how he appears. Now to me, it looks like he's terrified. Let's play that again. It looks like he's, he's falling. Things are not going well for this guy right now. I don't know why, but the animation seems to change how I perceive the image. There's a kind of emotion which is associated with the, with the motion. Okay, let's stop that. Um, when you're done, if you like this guy looking terrified as though he's falling down to the ground, you can hit export and it will export a very short movie. It's a very quick process. Let's uh, cancel and take a look at another image. Guys, if you are interested in the subject of this video, you might also be interested in this. Fiverr have a range of freelance and professional providers who are able to offer you customized intros, outros, video editing, vis visual effects, video, this video, that, all kinds of good stuff is there. And you probably know of them already. They also have, as well as the traditional offerings, they've got a range of providers who have been classed in the professional category. These guys have been classed as being the top uh, providers, the top freelancers on Fiverr. And they belong to a special category where if you need something next level, you can get their services for a little bit extra, but they do have a very high standard of production. So if you're interested in doing the kind of stuff that we're doing in this video, but you want it taken to the professional level, uh, links in the description. Guys, we're gonna go back to normal programming. This image here will show us some of the problems that occur. So with all of these images, I have gone and used resize image size, and that gives us a much smaller uh, operating space. You don't want it too large, you know, just take my word for it. If it's too large, you're gonna suffer. Let's go to enhance moving pictures, moving photos. Now with this one, we're gonna have problems. Let's try the in and out. And notice that it always defaults to 3D down here. We're gonna see the 2D motion and what that looks like. There we are. We've got the 3D motion happening. Now, if you're looking very closely, you can see that effect. They, they call it the parallax effect where the foreground is moving at a different rate to the background. It's very subtle in this image, except in one area. Down here, you can see it's trying a bit too hard. And if you look very closely, it just looks a little bit jagged there. It just looks a little bit unclean in the way that it renders that. Now to tackle this, what we could do is to stop it, cancel. We're not going to save the changes. And what we could do is to use some of the tools in the expert area just to remove this part of the image to clone it out. Um, I'm not going to do it here to save time, but you could use some of these tools just to clone out the part that is acting in, in a weird way. And then we can go back and take a look again at some of the features inside of the panel. I, what I want to do with this one here is to look what happens. Now, remember, we did this once. We zoomed in and out. We got this weird artifact. 
if we had edited out this part of the image, just cloned part of the floor onto the onto the image, we would not be getting such uh, such a response, which is not quite uh, quite accurate. That's just the algorithm getting the animation a little bit wrong. I'm going to try a different animation, which is going to be maybe even more wrong in the results that we get. And we're going to try to see how to tackle that. So we're going to choose pan right. Pan right just moves the, the, the camera to the right or just act as though you're moving the camera slightly to the right. There we have it. Replay. And as we replay it, I want you to notice we're not getting so much of a problem down here, but we're getting a very, very noticeable problem what we're seeing here is the results of the algorithm, the artificial intelligence. We're seeing something here. It's called artifacting. We're seeing, can you see here where it just doesn't look right uh, around the girl's leg? It, that looks wrong. It's obviously wrong to human eyes. The, the artificial intelligence isn't quite getting it right. That's referred to as artifacting. It happens quite a lot with artificial intelligence. Now, I like to follow these algorithms, these artificial intelligences, they have a kind of evolution from starting off as scientific papers. Then they move into demonstrations that we see from companies like NVIDIA. And then they move into desktop software, uh, as we see here with Photoshop Express. And th th there is a process whereby the algorithms can be improved over time. They, 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 it's called deep learning and they can continue to learn uh over time so they can improve quite a lot but you need to be aware of these things these are called artifacts and if we have an artifact like this where it's really really noticeable we can just stop it and then that's when you go and switch off the the, the 3d uh, motion and hopefully we can see what this looks like with 2d so if we now run it with 2d it looks a lot better we're not getting quite as much fringing as possible as was the case before. Uh, and we're not getting quite as much artifacting. There's a tiny bit of fringing you might notice there. And I don't know why the algorithm is, is, is not programmed to get rid of that. It should be fairly simple to get rid of that. But you can see the motion now is much simpler. There's not so much of that 3D parallax going on. And generally speaking, you're going to get cleaner edits if you use the 2D. It's not going to be quite as spectacular, but the 2D option is quite a lot cleaner sometimes. Let's go ahead and, and cancel. Again, I'm not going to export, but if you were to hit save at that point, I think it exports the MP4 file anyway. Let's take a look at this one. This is a really cool image. We're going to look at zoom in. Just look, look at zoom in and see what zoom in does. And here, you look at the emotion. You've got a guy, he's sitting there. It's not a very happy scene. And just looking at it like this, on my screen, he just looks, he just looks so much more sad. It, it just adds this drama to, to the situation. We'll try tilt up and see what that looks like. No, uh, that, that's pan left. So w w with the panning options, they often have this kind of neutral feeling. It's almost as though the camera is in the scene, just exploring the scene. Uh, the, if we pan right, it does the opposite. It moves in the opposite direction. But again, the emotion, it, it doesn't add or take away from the emotion, I feel. It, it's the most neutral option. If we go for the tilt up or tilt down, what you'll notice with these ones, What I notice is artifacting. I'm getting quite a lot of artifacting uh, around here. And again, this is an area where I think the algorithm is just being very silly. It's it's not doing something very sensible. Uh, once again, if we went to 2D and hit the play button, that would sort things out just fine. Let's hit play. And you can see we've got a similar animation. The 3D effect has gone but it's much cleaner. We haven't got much artifacting. We're getting a bit of artifacting, which you may just be able to see uh, around where the table meets the shirt, where the folds of the shirt are fairly high contrast. It is artifacting. And um, in that sort of situation, you could choose a different photo. You could, if 
you're sharing this on social media, I don't think anyone would notice uh, that kind of artifacting. Let's cancel out and take a look at a, another option. This one here will work out just perfect. Let's go in and enhance photos. This one here was amazing. I had two images that were very similar. I tried this uh, 3D algorithm. The first image just completely broke down. Uh, and the second image, this one, it, it, it was almost perfect. Let's take a look here. Look at that. That is just amazing. That's it's almost as though you've got a camera and you're kind of moving in. <laughs> Look at that. That is amazing. That is completely amazing. You're moving in, you're moving out. And it's kind of surreal the way the guy is completely uh, emotionless. Like, you know, he, he's not, I don't know. It's, it's kind of surreal. Um, I really like this. I think this is when it works best. The thing is, I could not have predicted that this was going to work so well because a very similar image just did not work very well. With this one, it was perfect. I don't know how, why. Let's cancel again and we'll do one more. Let's do this one here. This one is pretty cool. Uh, again, enhance moving photos and uh, we'll see what this one does. Uh, we're going to try, I think, the zoom in and out. Take a look. We're going to see. It's not going to artifact, uh, but we're going to see something weird happening with... This is a girl doing something weird with her fencing. Well, not something weird. She's, she's fencing. Take a look at how the animation is perfect, but the algorithm doesn't quite figure out what's happen happening with the fencing sword. It thinks that the fencing sword is going into the background. So whereas she's coming forward, the fencing sword is kind of <laughs> tilting in the opposite direction. I thought that was kind of funny. But um, yeah, sometimes the algorithm doesn't quite get... Uh, it's very intelligent. It figures out that this girl is foreground. It figures out that this is background. It figures out that the ground has to kind of move with her and the background has to fall away. And it does a very, very good job. But just this one part of the image, it gets it wrong. It doesn't realize that this girl is pointing forward and therefore the, um, the, the, the weapon should be kind of moving out of the image, coming towards us. So it does get things a little bit weirdly wrong sometimes. Now, one thing I will say is that when you export th th these, they will come out as fairly small files with fairly small sizes, just about the same size that you're seeing on the screen here. And that gives us a limited amount of scope to crop into the image. So good idea is to test a few images, keep them nice and small. It will render much more quickly if the images are small and test a few images. Don't expect all of them to work. And when it does work perfectly, it is just a dream. Guys, that is going to be it. I hope you found this useful. Um, this is a really neat algorithm and hopefully over time we'll see uh, either in Photoshop Express or other versions of Photoshop or even other software this kind of effect uh, perfected uh, and perhaps much more capable. Perhaps we'll see the ability to process large image sizes. Guys, that is going to be it. I hope you like this as much as I did. I'm going to leave it there and I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye.